45 special stages along the way on a journey round Britain through the floods and forests. And among the leading challengers, a young Welshman from Haverford West, David Llewellyn. And he obligingly called in to see us this afternoon en route to Bath. The farmer's son is definitely among the rising stars of the sport. Last year he won the Classic Circuit of Ireland Rally and he's now an important member of the Austin Rover World Championship team. David Cartwright reports. Well, David, this certainly is a bit different from the ordinary metro that we'd see on the road. In fact, it's been called a Formula One car in disguise. So how powerful is it? Um, it's approximately about 400 horsepower. Uh, as you say, it's a lot different to the, uh, the normal family metro. Um, it's four-wheel drive. The engine sits behind the, the driver and co-driver. Um, and it's terribly noisy because you've got the engine right behind you uh, and uh, very hot as well. How does it compare with the other cars that you'll be competing against in the rally? Is it a lot more powerful? Um, no. It, the Metro has a normally aspirated engine, so it's slightly restricted on the maximum horsepower you can get out of the engine compared to the turbo cars. Uh, so the turbo cars, in fact, have, uh, have gone in front on the horsepower gain, and uh, that's the one place where we are lacking a bit, uh, is horsepower, as much as 150 to some of the other are the main manufacturers. But all the same, it's a very powerful car. So what sort of thrill do you get from driving this? <laughs> well, it is very, very exciting to drive, uh, but it does need a, a lot of concentration, and it is quite hard work. Um, but of course, the thrill of going through forests at 120 mile an hour is far more than I've experienced in any other car. You said it's a little bit uncomfortable with the noise and the heat, but what's it like to handle? Uh, it handles very, very well. Um, of course, with a normally aspirated engine, the advantage over the turbos is that you don't get any turbo lag. So the throttle response is immediate. So as soon as you put your foot on the throttle, you get the power. Um, the, the weight distribution with the engine being just behind the drivers, well, well spread out over the car and the four-wheel drive system. And the brakes are absolutely magic as well. Um, they've got big discs, uh, all ventilated, all round, and uh, very, very good. So does this car go well in other conditions? Because in the National Breakdown Rally, you had to combat snow as well as all the other conditions, didn't you? That's right. Um, obviously, the, the four-wheel drive system, in slippery conditions, uh, like snow, um, gives you a great advantage over a, a normally sort of two-wheel drive car. Uh, and of course when it's wet and slippery like it's probably going to be on, on this rally. And of course when the rally does come into Wales you'll be facing not only those conditions but also some stiff competition. So uh, who do you see as your main rivals? Well, to be honest, uh, the entry on this uh, year's RAC rally is so strong. I mean, anybody at the top 20 I think could, could actually win the rally. Uh, main opposition has got to come of course from Lancia Peugeot. Uh, and Ford. Um, obviously, the race for, for me would be try and be first Brit home. A slightly easier drive this time round. Are we going to see a Welsh winner of the RAC rally? <laughs> I'd love to think you would, but uh, um, I think that's looking a, a bit on the bright side. I'd have to have a lot of luck with me to do that, I think. But I'd certainly be trying. Most of all, we wish him a safe trip. A Welsh driver and a British car sounds a winning combination to me. Whatever happens, there's a bargain waiting for someone because after the race, David will be selling that Metro at roughly a quarter of its present value.